You were told that computers would soon take over everything from shopping to banking and stock market, and that billions of people. Imagine in 1980s, you were told that computers would soon take over everything from shopping to banking and stock market, and that billions of people would be connected via a kind of a web. It would seem absurd, but then all of it happened. We humans, lying at the peak of evolution, are not satisfied with the pace at which we are evolving. It was unsaid that we would start manipulating the gene, outpacing natural evolution. Gene editing is one such revolutionary technology that has single-handedly given life to this possibility. And at the pinnacle of this field, we have a gene editing tool so effective, so powerful, that it has blurred the lines between fiction and reality, overshadowing all other gene editing tools. CRISPR. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? Let's break it down. The diamonds represent repeat sequences present throughout the length of CRISPR sequence. These repeats are connected by short stretches of DNA derived from the invading bacteriophage called the spacer DNA. This serves as a memory to protect the bacteria against subsequent phage infections. In 1987, it was through pure serendipity that scientists discovered CRISPR in E. coli. It was a steep ride for CRISPR until 2012 when Jennifer Dodna and Emmanuel Charpentier uncovered its true potential as a gene editing tool. Let us now see the hows and whys of CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR-Cas9 has been called as the biotechnological discovery of the century. This system is revolutionizing genomic engineering. It could confer genetic advantages that were previously thought to be complex and difficult to accomplish. CRISPR has made gene editing so simple that even do-it-yourself kits are available online. The fast, simple and cheap nature of CRISPR programming have fueled the popularity of this convenient technology. We conducted a cross-sectional study among 300 medical undergraduates and about 48% of them were aware about CRISPR followed by other gene editing tools. The 52% of students who were unaware were provided with resources to understand the clinical implications and ethical issues of our study. There has been increase in the number of citations of CRISPR since 2015 in research abstracts and social media platforms like TED Talks and various channels on YouTube. This was on par with the study which we conducted where we found out that about 43% came across CRISPR in YouTube, 38% in research abstracts and 20% in TED Talks. Now that we know the why's of CRISPR, let us discuss the house. Among 48% of the people who have heard about CRISPR, almost all of them knew nothing about its mechanism of action. So let's discuss the mechanism of action. Here, a bacteriophage infects the bacteria and injects its genome into the bacteria. But the bacteria aren't defenseless. They react through the CRISPR-Cas9 system, which consists of A, a guide RNA which identifies a particular sequence in the DNA, and B, the Cas9 protein which cuts the DNA. So now, what is the guide RNA and how is it formed? This is a bacterial genome. It has DNA coding for the elements of the CRISPR-Cas9 system. That is A, tracer RNA, B, Cas proteins, and C, a CRISPR sequence. The transcription of this sequence forms the pre-CRISPR RNA. The tracer RNA is complementary to the repeat sequence of the pre-CRISPR RNA and therefore pairs with it. This pairing results in maturation of the pre-CRISPR RNA, thereby forming the guide RNA. To summarize, the guide RNA has the tracer RNA, the repeat sequence, and the spacer element. The guide RNA binds to Cas9 protein to form a complex, and this complex cuts the DNA in four steps. Step one, the complex scans the viral DNA for a short nucleotide sequence called as PAM. Step two, recognition of PAM by Cas9 induces unwinding of the DNA. Step three, the spacer element, a part of the guide RNA, tries to match with the DNA adjacent to the PAM. Step four, complete matching of the spacer element with the DNA activates the endonucleases of Cas9, which then cuts the DNA. Why doesn't Cas9 cut its own bacterial genome? PAM is present on the viral DNA, and this feature protects the bacterial genome from the endonucleases of Cas9. 
Now that we know how CRISPR works, let us see why it is such a big deal. In our study, we asked UG medical students about the potential uses of CRISPR. Most of them felt that it could be used to treat genetic diseases, which was closely followed by cancer. But they have no clue that active research is already underway doing this. Cancer, one of the most dreaded diseases of 21st century. The death burden throughout the world has been vastly reduced with the help of early screening techniques, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy, which have their own set of side effects. But with the advent of CRISPR, all of this could be achieved without the side effects. Let's take a look of how our future might be. Some aspect of this is already a reality. As a part of phase one independent clinical trial in 2016, researchers in China injected crispr edited genes in patients having non-small cell lung cancer. And as a part of phase two independent trial, crispr edited genes have been injected in 81 patients with B cell lymphoma and leukemia. These tests are showing very promising results. HIV. The traditional HIV antiretroviral therapy aims at reducing the amount of virus produced by our body, but does not eliminate the virus embedded in our genome, which acts as a reservoir for infection. CRISPR-Cas9 can be used to eliminate the virus from our body by modifying its DNA. A recent study showed 96% efficiency in removing the virus from our body. Human trials are expected to start soon. Malaria, unlike normal Mendelian gene inheritance, which has an expressing probability of 50%, 100% inheritance can be achieved through CRISPR-Cas9 using a technique called gene drive. This gene drive can be induced in female mosquitoes by using CRISPR-Cas9 tagged along with a re gene resistance to infection or to female sterility, thus effectively eradicating malaria. Molecular diagnostics. CRISPR-Cas9 is used for molecular diagnosis, superseding present techniques like PCR. Sherlock, neither him nor him. Most of the CRISPR-Cas proteins target DNA, but Cas13A targets RNA, causing cleavage of non-specific RNA surrounding the target RNA. Scientists harness this to develop a molecular detection platform, which they have termed as specific high-sensitivity enzymatic reporter unlocking, Sherlock. This has huge diagnostic implications. It could very well be the equivalent of urine pregnancy tests for other diseases. Epidemic diagnostics. Cas guide RNA complex is used to distinguish between closely related viral strains due to difference in the PAM regions. As an example, the American strain of Zika virus was associated with fetal microcephaly, while the African strain was not. Hence, identifying the strain is of clinical significance. Scientists have used CRISPR to develop paper-based diagnostic kits to distinguish between the strains. Gene knockouts. CRISPR gene knockout techniques have become highly popular in the recent years, as scientists have used these techniques countless times to create various animal models and study the influence of certain genes have on the mouse model. The, the sensitivity and accuracy of the system has allowed the scientists to create mouse models. One such animal model was made for DMD. DMD-affected muscle cells were shown to be successfully cured of the dystrophy. Similar studies in the treatment of cystic fibrosis and Huntington's under active research. Though CRISPR possesses vast potential, what is hampering its use in the field of medicine and in every other clinic? The factors which handicap its potential include off-targets. These are due to the action of CRISPR-Cas9 at unintended targets. This is due to the sheer size and complexity of human genome. Other factors include its delivery into multicellular organisms, immunogenicity of its components, and difficulty in altering polygenic traits. While 76% of the people believe that the pros of CRISPR overweighed its cons, when we rephrase the question to include the possibility of human life being at risk, most of them reconsidered their views, and those in favor of using CRISPR dropped to 54%. This indicates adverse effects aren't the only bumps in CRISPR's journey. In addition to its technical constraints, we have social and ethical concerns to consider. These include how we use it, regulate it, and avoid its negative use. Somatic gene editing can be divided into somatic gene therapy, which is considered as medicine, and somatic gene enhancement, which could be seen as a form of plastic surgery. A big debate arising here is should we move beyond treating the sick and start editing diseases out of future generation, something which is known as germline therapy. To our surprise, trials have already been conducted in China on non-viable embryos to edit the gene responsible for beta thalassemia. Out of the 86 tested, only 28 were successfully spliced, the surprisingly large number of off-target mutations. 
this poses a serious threat of passing the off-target mutations, not only to the individual, but to the future human population. However, studies are being conducted to minimize the off-target mutations by improving knowledge on the human genome. Another significant trial conducted by scientists at Oregon used CRISPR-Cas9 in fertilized eggs to snip a defective gene which increases the risk for heart failure. We are not removing the disease, but only the risk for it. Research on human embryos could be a slippery slope towards germline enhancement, or as most of us know it, designer babies. Is it right for the parents to decide a child's genome? We asked undergraduate medical students the same question, and they had the following views. About 65% of them suggested that parents had the right to make minor modifications, and on further analyzing the data, it was found that males were more inclined towards non-medical enhancement than females, supporting a previous research finding that females tend to retain the child's genome. Once we cross the line to germline therapy, the boundary between therapy and enhancement may not hold. If cancer, sickle cell anemia, AIDS can be cured by CRISPR, why not proceed to less threatening disorders and phenotypic attributes? Indeed, what is to preclude a society from deciding that a certain skin color, stature, or build is a disorder? This selection of seemingly favorable attributes will eventually alter evolution and lead to disruption of diversity. CRISPR. Although relatively cheap, its accessibility is still under question. We are not ready to face a greater inequality where a world where only rich can access it and can become genetically superior. CRISPR isn't going to end disease, or hunger, or climate change anytime soon. Nor is it about to deliver designer babies or commit mass genocide. CRISPR, however, is already beginning to reshape the physical world around us in much less radical ways, one base pair at a time. We've had the privilege of visiting CCMB and meeting Dr. P. Chandrasekhar, who shared his views on CRISPR. He mentioned that strict regulatory measures should be taken while dealing with CRISPR and that CRISPR is definitely here to stay. And uh, really good, very well done. Just had a question, all these uh, animations and graphics, did you design them yourself or did you borrow them from the net? A part of it was designed by ourselves, we edited okay. it, uh, most of it. Some parts were, deri were taken from nature, like many YouTube channels, nature. Right. Like we gave them credits in the end, like whatever okay. we took on that. Just very well done and I think you've covered most aspects, including the ethical aspects and yes. the application in yes. uh, the genome editing, The diagnostics, everything. Just had a question, are you aware of any other technologies which can be used for genome editing and what is the advantage of CRISPR over those technologies? Yeah, so, so we had a stat which showed that CRISPR, like more people were aware about CRISPR rather than other gene editing tools like zinc finger nucleases right. and talons. Talons, yes. Like compared to them, the thing which CRISPR has, like it has an edge over it. Why? Yeah. Because not only it is cheaper, unlike zinc finger nucleases which needs to be engineered like a single base pair needs to be made for each uh, a single uh, zinc finger nucleases had to be made for a single base pair this requires a lot of time and manual labor instead of doing that we can produce a specific sequence of dna which will uh, like identify that specific dna and will be very accurate compared to others where coming to talons like it has pro it has the problem of gene delivery into the cells yeah. and it, it also is very hard to uh, like make in laboratories and it will take months or actually years to make models for certain diseases. So like compared to them, CRISPR has a hedge because it can be uh, made in a shorter time in laboratories. In we went to CCMB. So mm -hmm. they could, they, uh, he said that he, they could make specific gene models in a week and study its effects. Like in they could finish all the research in a month, which was saving so much time for them. Like they, uh, yeah, it, it yeah, so anything else, anything else you know about like the differences between double-stranded break and single-stranded break? What is the difference and yeah, what's the so advantage? Th there are like the two classes of CRISPR, class one and class two. Class one, like it generates blunt end cuts, which will make it difficult to induce uh, our genome, like homologous repair, it will make it difficult to do that. Like the, the second class of CRISPR is able to produce like staggered cuts, which will help it to integrate the foreign DNA, which we are providing it, the gene of interest, into the genome to be integrated properly and you know, express its genome. 
which is help like uh, the, sim the simple molecule of CRISPR Cas9 can be modified in a way instead of producing a blunt end, it will be made to produce a staggered cut, which will help to attach our own DNA, making it effective for gene therapy. Okay, good, nice. It was all Einstein work. Einstein, so many oh. little Einstein standing on the stage. Thank you, That was a good presentation. Thank you so much. So and uh, when do you expect this to be applied to clinical work in Hyderabad or India? Oh, l even we thought that it would, it would take a lot of time to be applied in, in the field of medicine, but to our surprise, when we went to CCMB, they were actually using it. We had the privilege of seeing the material, like how they're using it in mouse models. S like the, uh, Dr. Ch Dr. Chandrasekhar, he told us like it would be very soon, like, you know, like anything could change overnight. L a revolution doesn't require time. It just That's requires what? the how proper many person. Years? Uh, Is it for your children or grandchildren? Okay, you can simplify. Uh, Will it be useful for your children or your grandchildren? I'd probably say grandchildren. Good. <laughs> say that if things work smoothly, it is probably for you itself, not even oh for I your I children or If you can use it for ourselves, yeah. it would be like great. Yeah, it yeah. would be wonderful because... So actually, a lot of it is now in the animal model stage and yeah. uh, certain things like thalassemia and all have just, they've just started phase one yeah. clinical trials. Only trial. the phase one clinical yeah. trials are on. So if it just goes smoothly, then uh, maybe yeah. hopefully within the next 10 years, at least for some of these disorders, yeah. it should cross the phase three and then come into uh, you so know application. So the thing is, we, ha we found a research article online w about the cancer trials, which gives us details about each patient, like the name of the patient, the address, and this health condition. And we found that like it was, it's a wonderful thing that none of the patient's health are deteriorating. They are healthy, and the cancer is getting, you know, the cancer burden is reducing. No, so uh, the off-site targeting is much less with CRISPR compared to the previous uh, yes. uh, technologies which yes. are available for gene therapy. Yes, because it has a very high sensitivity. Huge round of applause. Uh, I would like I would like the audience to ask any questions because it is a very hi it's a highly evolving topic and any of your insights would be very valuable to us. We I it's it's a process of learning. You ask us, we we'll learn. Like whatever we are telling right now could be obsolete by tomorrow morning, and whatever we didn't tell right now could be the new thing tomorrow. So no questions? Thank you, everyone. <laughs>